Tonight, Lady Esther presents the Screen Guild players in one of the most beautiful love stories the screen has ever known. It is a radio adaptation of the Samuel Goldwyn picture, Dark Angel, and it stars Merle Oberon as Kitty Vane, Ronald Coleman as Alan Trent, and Donald Crisp as Sir George Barton. The Lady Esther Screen Guild players in Dark Angel. in the last war, and then as now, men fought and suffered, and lived in the hope of going home. And now, after almost a year in the mud of France, Alan Trent has come home, home to the lovely English country house where he was raised, home to his childhood sweetheart, Kitty Vane. Ah, Kitty, Kitty, if you knew what it means to see you, to talk to you, if you knew how frightened I've been. Frightened? You frightened, Alan? Yes, frightened. Frightened of coming home, of finding that you had changed, that you didn't feel the things I wanted you to feel. Frightened now of saying what I want. Alan. Or maybe I can't say it all. Maybe I can't say any part of it. I'm scared, Kitty. Kitty, I've so much love for you. I... It's like something you've saved up for a lifetime, and then it all comes at once. Alan. Alan, I wanted to hear that so badly. Oh, but you must have known. I wasn't sure. I said to myself, I've always been around. Perhaps he's just used to me. Perhaps he'll meet some other girl. Oh, Kitty, if you weren't here, I'd stop living. I'd stop breathing. I'd stop wanting to breathe. Don't ever go away. I won't, ever. I promise. Alan, we ought to tell your mother. What should we tell her? We're going to be married. Day after tomorrow? Tomorrow. Why, you shameless (laughs) hussy. (laughs) Alan, dear. Mother, we were just coming into... What is it? What's wrong? They just phoned a telegram from the village. The war office, Alan. The war office? Not my leave. It hasn't been cancelled. I'm afraid you'll have to go tonight. <clears throat> You're to sail from Folkestone in the morning. Whom else could we ask, sir? You're our vicar. If you'd just marry us tonight, before I go... Alan, I've tried to explain to you. There must be some way. You've known us all our lives. And no two I'd rather see joined in marriage. Even two hours ago, it might have been possible. Now it's too late. Too late. I'm sorry. I have an evening service. Alan, I wish there was something I could do. Well, thank you anyway, sir. God bless you both. Good night. After all these years, Kitty, we're two hours late. Two hours that may change our lives. No, they won't change our lives. Alan, I'm coming to Folkestone with you. Oh, darling, you can't. Why not? Well, if we belong to each other. I marry you, Alan Trent, in front of a church. And I marry you, Kitty Vane, for always, until the day I die. Not half a bad room to start our married life, is it? Is it, darling? Oh, Kitty. I, I'm sorry. I was listening to the guns. Oh, they're far away, Kitty. Across the channel. Don't hear them. They'll stop. Oh, there's things going by. Down there in the street. They aren't far away. Oh, it takes a lot to run a war. Motor lorries, horses, tanks. And men. Thousands and thousands of men. And in a little while, you'll be one of them. You'll be gone with the rest of them. You'll be... Stop it. Oh, listen, darling. They're going. I'm going. There's nothing to be done about it. We must face the truth, Kitty. All we have is tonight. One night to live a whole life together. So we'll have to pretend. We're married, you see. We've been married quite long, and we're having dinner with our family. Yes. 
with our family. Now, would you like another glass of Sauterne, my dear? Please. Uh, tell me, uh, do you think uh, Mimi is old enough for some wine? Mimi? Uh, that's our youngest, don't you remember? She's right there at the foot of the table. <laughs> Children, Agatha, Bertram, Harold, Mimi, this is a very special occasion. Your parents' 25th wedding anniversary. 15th. Uh, please, my dear. Uh, children, uh, 25 years ago, your mother was a lovely sight. The most beautiful girl I ever saw. And your father, children? Uh, Kitty, uh, can't you do something with Mimi? She just bit little Harold on the arm. <laughs> Mimi, behave yourself. Now, children, as I was saying, your father was the finest, dearest... Kindest. Your father loved your mother as no one ever loved before. Your mother loved your father since the world began. Since before time. Since. Since. Five o'clock. Time to shove off. I'll get my rat. Oh, no, no, please. Don't come. It would only make it more difficult. Just sit right here and. Close your eyes. That's it. That's a good girl, Kitty. That's a brave girl. I love you. I will always love you. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, Alan. Goodbye, my love. Another letter today. Oh, such a wonderful letter. Aren't all of Alan's letters wonderful? Oh, but this is very special, you see. He thinks he'll get another leave just as soon as they... As soon as they what? Kitty! It's... It's nothing. Only... Just then I felt such a sharp pain. And it's silly, isn't it? I thought I heard the guns. Remember, men, we're a small patrol. It's dark. Jerry's can't see us if we hug the ground. Yes, sir. Single file. Ten, twenty feet apart. I'll take the lead. All right, come on, let's go. Careful, sir. There's a big one coming over. Look out, sir. You all right, sir? Captain. Captain. Captain Trent. I won't believe it. I won't. What if he hasn't written for a month? Maybe he's busy. Maybe he's had no chance to write. Two months. That's not so long. Maybe his letters have just gone astray. Anything could happen in a war. Three months. What if it's true? Four months. What if it's true? Six months. Six months. Oh, Alan. Alan, I loved you so much. That's it. That's it, sir. That's fine, fine. Just keep the cane out in front of it. That's fine. You're making real progress, sir. And you've only been here five months. Is that how long it's been? Five months? Didn't you know, sir? I'm afraid I lost track. The dead don't have much use for time. Ah, oh, now, really, sir. That ain't no proper way to talk. Sir George is doing wonders with you men. A regular miracle worker he is. Can he give me back my sight? Ah, uh, I know, sir. You're on the bitter side right now. But that'll pass, you mark my word. Wait and see how you feel six months from now. <laughs> sent for me, Sir George? Yes, Crane, I did. Mills has been telling me you want to leave. Oh, I've been here long enough, don't you think? Mm, a year next week. I'm afraid our training school hasn't helped you very much. 
Oh, if that's true, it's my fault, sir, not yours. You've been finding something within yourself, haven't you? And you don't want to talk about it? Well, then, the rest is just routine. I'm assigning Mills to you as an orderly. I'd rather not. Those are rules, Crane. He'll take you to your home and get you settled and... I'm not going home. I have no home. And your name isn't Roger Crane, is it? It's as good a name as any other. Your card says that when you were picked up, all means of identification had been destroyed. And later you gave your name as Roger Crane. I could have checked that, you know. I know. I've been grateful you didn't. As a matter of fact, I even had a clue. It was among your personal things. A picture. A picture? The picture of a very pretty young girl. And across the bottom was written, Come back to Kitty. Kitty. 